We're adding a new member to the now team tonight, although he is no stranger to NBC, certainly, no stranger to American television audiences. Bob Costas is here with the story of a man who again this week is at the center of yet another controversy. Bob, welcome. Tom, thanks very much. As you know, the NCAA basketball tournament begins tomorrow, and Indiana University is, as usual, part of the tournament field. Even more than usual, their coach, Bob Knight, has been in the news of late. Knight is equal parts brilliance and abrasiveness. He's regarded as one of the greatest coaches in the game's history. But his team ended this season in a slump, including one game they lost by 50 points. And Knight's infamous temper has again made headlines. What about Sharon Wilkerson here? Well, look at He gave him the headbutt. Here's the latest incident. Knight butting heads with a player he pulled from a game last week. The coach told me it was a simple accident. I went down and... and uh, and bent over, and, and we apparently collided heads. When I, I mean, I didn't even notice anything more about it at the time than two guys uh, in close quarters, one of them bending over, one of them leaning forward. How do you interpret the reaction to this? Most of the reaction I got, Bob, was that any negative reaction to it was the absolute most ridiculous interpretation that anybody could ever make of anything. It's out of control, he's out of control, and they do need to step in and fire him because otherwise it, it's not going to get across to him that he's doing something wrong. Your reaction if you do something like that is to back off. He didn't. He bored right on in, continued on with, with his berating of the kid, and the kid's expression told you everything you needed to know. When my time on earth is gone and my activities here are past. I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. Even if in most of these incidents you don't feel you're guilty of any real misbehavior, even if it's just boorishness on occasion, shouldn't a guy as... Define as, boorish. Shouldn't a, well, a lot of people think profanity is boorish. A lot of people think being gruff with the media is boorish. Some people would think grabbing the microphone and saying what you said the other day at the last home game is boorish. Shouldn't a guy as bright as you and as experienced as you have come to terms with that by now? Well, if 17,000 people would have booed when I grabbed the microphone the other day, then I would have paid attention. You're preaching to the to choir that. there. This is that's my choir, though. Bloomington. That, that's, this is, I live in Bloomington. I don't live anywhere else. But who has the authority to get on Bob Knight in the state of Indiana? You know who has to? Bob Knight has to. And I can't tell you the number of times I've done that. I can't tell you, and I don't even uh, discuss it, the number of times I've gone home and I've said, God, I, I wish I wouldn't have gotten on that kid like that. I wish I didn't think I had to get on. I wish I hadn't gotten on the team. No matter what you think about Bob Knight, he is an extraordinary basketball coach. Under Knight, Indiana has won three national championships, 11 Big Ten titles, and Knight coached the 1984 U.S. Olympic basketball team that won the gold medal. Here, we came over too far this time. We got you guys up on top when he could have handled it back here, and we needed to push back the other way, but that's not bad. But Knight is about more than just winning. He's known for running a scrupulously clean program. No cash, cars, or other illegal inducements to players. And Knight's kids graduate almost all of them the absolute essence of coaching that's good. That's good. is See, that's how to you teach move. you just can't come across laterally like you did it's got to be up and then back out I, I think you're you're using the sport to enable a kid that plays it for you to have an experience that provides him with the background to be successful i would far rather have a kid involved with a book than a ball Knight also contributes to the community. On this night, he's preaching the value of reading to kids as part of a program called Night Readers. The coach also led a drive that raised more than a million dollars for the Indiana University Library. The book is a lifetime. The ball is just a fleeting moment. And when Hollywood makes a movie about college basketball, Blue Chips, they go to Knight. Nick Nolte plays a character based on Knight, and the coach himself does a cameo. But for many, the single indelible image of Bob Knight is this. Look here, look here. The chair. Look chair. And it's not the only controversial thing Knight's ever done. There was the dispute with a cop over practice time at a tournament in Puerto Rico. And various other eruptions, large and small, but too numerous to list. So far during this turbulent season, even before the headbutt, 
He had been ejected from two games and accused, he says wrongly, of kicking one of his players, his own son, Pat, during a game. If it is important to you to get a message across about integrity, about academics and athletics, and if 99% of your actions are in keeping with that, if there's a purity in your approach to coaching the game, why let that message be blurred right. by this other stuff? I mean, I, hey, I'm not, I have never once said I'm perfect. I, I, I make mistakes, which really doesn't separate me from anybody else. Um, but you I'm, make them in big, flamboyant ways that fit in no, sound bites no. and, and video clips. I, I make them, I make them uh, uh, in front of people, but I don't make them flamboyantly. Somebody else creates the flamboyance around it. Somebody else. If you demand discipline from your players, are you liable to be fairly criticized if there are times when you appear to be undisciplined yourself? Oh, yeah, I think so. I, I, but... Uh, um, uh, I think you got to take the word fairly out of there. <laughs> I think I mean, we got to take that out of there. Am I liable to be criticized? Absolutely. Uh, an architect here in town uh, sent me a little thing. Uh, any fool can criticize and most do. And, and so uh, am I susceptible or liable to criticism? Certainly. And sometimes fairly. In the final essence of the thing, what is throwing a chair? Am I the only coach in history that's ever thrown a chair, a coat, a clipboard? Uh, water cooler or whatever. I mean, I joined a long list of guys that have thrown chairs or thrown something. I may have been the most infamous or the most famous chair thrower, but certainly not the only one. Forget the critics. What worries Knight's friends is that he may go too far. And his brilliant career may end in an irrational incident, like that of Ohio State football coach Woody Hayes, who punched a player from an opposing team. You've said that. If you were ever out of control or over the line, you'd know it. You'd know to stop. You'd know to walk away. Are you still sure you'd know? Yeah, I think so. I hope I know more now than ever. I, I hope I've gotten uh, a little smarter as time has gone on. I hope I'm a little uh, more aware of things. And Bob, I've said this before. Only I really know. Uh, I've used this. Bullfight critics row on row cloud the enormous plaza full. But there's only one man there who knows, and he's the one who fights the bull. Here's a quote attributed in a Sports Illustrated article only to a friend of yours. A guy who knows you supposedly said, Bob is a horse's ass, or words to that effect, but he knows it, and he tries like hell to make up for it. I don't think I'm a horse's ass. I think I'm a pretty good guy. Uh, I think I'm a guy that, uh, and, and I've often said this um, to some of the... Uh, uh, sanctimonious, self-righteous critics that I have. I would hope that um, when Judgment Day comes, they don't have to appear before St. Peter's table with me and only one space available for both of us and the judgment being made on which of us has done the most for his fellow man. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, St. Peter will turn to me and said, Robert, pass through the gate. Knight's relationship with the press is not exactly what you'd call warm. See, you may not take all you television people and build an island for you. Put these writers in a cave under the island. <laughs> there are exceptions, though. One is Bob Hamill of the Bloomington Herald Times, a Knight confidant. You know, I always, always wonder why uh, the, the basketball he coached is all predicated on anticipation. That this inevitably is going to lead to this. I wish you could see that a little bit better with his, with his own uh, uh, incidents because most of the time the, the, the ramification that comes is predictable. Now they call a technical foul on Knight. Which leads us to the central irony of Bob Knight, a man who insists his players anticipate and control themselves. Bob Knight is college basketball's raging bull. He sees a purity in the game and has an idealized notion of how it should be played and taught. He is obviously a control freak, and the basketball environment he creates at Indiana is his refuge from a larger world he can't control. So when anybody, a player, a ref, a reporter, whomever or whatever, violates his sense of order, his sense of right and wrong, in his world, Bob Knight becomes enraged. To him, that rage flows from a principle and is thus justified and even useful. But clearly, there are times when it's a principle run amok. Oh! 
If I hear oh f one more time after you miss the shot, I mean you're gonna say oh f going up and down those stairs until you can't f damn stand up. Now is there anything about that you don't understand? All right, then we're gonna really enjoy listening to you say oh f oh f oh f oh, oh, oh. I mean to the point where you can't f damn get it out of your mouth anymore. If he could get the extreme volatility under control. Would he have to throw the baby out with the bath? Would that modify his personality so much that all the good aspects of the intensity would go with it? Well, that's a hard an answer because a coach has to be who he is. Former coach Pete Newell, who won the national championship at the University of California 35 years ago, is one of Knight's closest friends. You know, you can borrow a, uh, you can borrow a play, you can borrow a defense, you can borrow this. You can't borrow the personality of, of, of another coach. <laughs> Knight, the perfectionist, the disciplinarian. The question is, does he push his players, teenagers, 20-year-olds, too hard? Act like you want to play. Have you ever had a parent say to you, if it was just basketball, if it was just academics, my kid would be bound for Indiana. But I just can't be sure about the relationship oh, with Coach Knight, so forget it. Absolutely. I simply say, Bob, that I'm going to be the toughest coach he can play for. I'm going to be more demanding than any coach he can play for. He's going to have to go to class. He's going to have to do this. He's going to have to. 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 There'll be more demands placed on your son at Indiana than anywhere he can go. Now, Billy, you've got to understand that, too. And we've got to start out right now with that in mind. And if you don't think, if you want to do your own thing, if you want to play your game, at Indiana, we're going to play my game. The overwhelming majority of Knight's players, past and present, swear by him. And if they swear at him, they don't do it in public. Listen to senior Damon Bailey on the best and worst thing about his coach. I think the best thing about Coach Knight is that he's going to give you everything he's got and he wants everything that, that you've got. You know, and as far as the worst thing, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I won't stay away from that. It's odd how this passionate, intense man affects his players. He always looks rumpled in his red sweater. They wear ties. He is difficult and brash. They are polite and go to class. Playing for night is an experience unlike any other in sports. See, where in the hell are you going with the ball? He's moving away. You got a defensive man coming in. I mean, him it. Use judgment. Use good judgment. We can't play with that kind of judgment. Number 25 for the Hoosiers is Patrick Knight, Bob Knight's son. In a game this past December, Patrick threw a pass away. And Bob Knight, well, what do you think he did? I kicked the chair. Uh, I grabbed Patrick's Stop shirt. Patrick, did you think he had kicked you? Um, no, I know he was going for the chair. I mean, my leg just happened to be where the chair was. I mean, I got grazed, but I mean, as you can tell, he's going for the chair. Patrick knows that there's nobody on the face of the earth I love more than, than him. And, and he understands that. He also understands that he made a really careless, bad, blind pass out on top. Bob Knight, in his way brilliant, certainly principled, but at times seemingly unable or just unwilling to see where toughness and integrity ends and where misbehavior begins. People want talent, but often they don't understand those things associated with it and upon which it may even be dependent and refuse them all understanding. People want to win. You know, people want national championship banners. People want to talk about Indiana being competitive. How do we get there? Uh, we don't get there with milk and cookies. We never have and we never will. I, I saw a game last night. A team came off the floor after playing rather poorly, winning by a point, and everybody's really happy. Maybe that's the way I should be. Uh, maybe uh, that's the way everybody wants me to be. But these banners would not be hanging above my head if that's the way I would have been. Bob Knight says it takes that to win national championship, but coaches Smith at uh, North Carolina and Krzyzewski at Duke, the legendary Johnny Wooden at UCLA, all won a lot of championships, and they were all complete gentlemen. Is Bobby Knight out of control in your judgment? In fairness, I think he has a legitimate point when he says that at least some of these incidents are misinterpreted or blown out of proportion simply because it's him and his reputation precedes him. On the other hand, he fails to appreciate the consequences of these mishaps. 
and he walks the line so often and leaves himself so little margin for error that in that sense, he's out of control. For example, the young man Sharon Wilkerson told me he doesn't believe that Knight intentionally headbutted him. And when he had a, a moment to think about it, no hard feelings. But Knight was right up in his face, left him so little margin for error that in that sense, Bob is out of control. And I think there's a tragic aspect to all this. In addition to his obvious success as a coach, Knight is one of the brightest people I have ever met in sports. And he is capable of many unpublicized examples of great compassion and personal generosity. The kid whose tuition he pays out of his own pocket after the kid's eligibility is run out. Landon Turner, the former star player paralyzed in an automobile accident, his ongoing concern for him, and dozens and dozens of acts of kindness that don't fit into a soundbite or don't wind up on television. And in an age of rampant hypocrisy in college sports, he has an unshakable and unquestioned dedication to academics for his ballplayers. That's a message.